which means that, they, in effect, the Gazans are either starved to death or they have to bring in uh, food and, and so forth in the tunnels that uh, go from Gaza out into uh, Egyptian Sinai Desert region. Former President Jimmy Carter has written a new book. It's called We Can Have Peace in the Holy Land. We come back from break. We'll go back to the interview. Stay with us. Rabia Bukhalil, moments here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I am Amy Goodman. As we return to our interview with former President Jimmy Carter, his latest book, We Can Have Peace in the Holy Land. President Carter, on the issue of Afghanistan, um, Barack Obama made uh, his position known early on Iraq, saying he was opposed to the war with Iraq, even before the U.S. invasion. Um, but on the issue of Afghanistan, he is for a surge there. Um, on Democracy Now!, we just interviewed the attorney, uh, Sharif uh, Basuni, who was the um, U.N. investigator, human rights investigator, in 2005, after after he came out with his report, very critical of the U.S. military, saying it committed human rights abuses, um, he was fired as the investigator under pressure from the United States. Uh, his assessment is that war is not the answer. Um, what is your assessment, President Carter? Well, that's one area that I think I would disagree with uh, Obama as far as uh, a surge that would lead to uh, more intense uh, bombing up, uh, up Afghan villages and, uh, and, and, and centers and the, and the heavy dependence on military. I would like to see us reach out more to be accommodating and negotiate with, uh, the, with all of the factions in Afghanistan. I notice that Obama is also much cooler in his uh, assessment of, uh, of President Karzai than was George W. Bush and, and knows that he's not been effective. He's basically just governed uh, right around the capital city, and his brother is well known to be one of the major drug dealers. So I think that uh, to reach out to, to uh, offer a hand of friendship or accommodation, not only to the warlords, but even, though, even to those uh, radicals uh, in the Taliban who are willing to negotiate would be, a, would be the best approach then to rely exclusively on uh, major military force. And, and I, I don't think there's any doubt that, that the General Petraeus and others that have made the assessment over there are telling Obama that, that this is a much more serious problem than uh, was previously thought, and also that a major surge, as was accomplished in, uh, in uh, Iraq, would, would only be effective if you could get the, the ones who are, are now opposed to U.S. forces to change their position and be more accommodating to our, to our presence. And, and with a future glimpse of when the United States uh, occupation would, would expire. So are you opposed to a surge in Afghanistan, President Carter? Well, if it's, if it's a surge of a military nature only, then I would be opposed to it. But I'm not convinced that that's what Obama wants. And I, I'm not convinced that that's what General Petraeus and others are recommending. I'm not privy to their secret uh, assessments that have been uh, now shared between them and President Obama. Right. But just the fact on that issue of the military, they're clearly calling for tens of thousands of more soldiers to go into Afghanistan. Do you see a parallel with what happened in Iraq? So 
Um, but I think if the if the soldiers going in there are mainly to maintain order and to reach out to the people in an accommodating way, that's one thing. If the soldiers are going in there to greatly escalate our military attacks, uh, then I think that would be a mistake. Do you think cutting aid to Israel um, would be a way to achieve Middle East peace? No, I don't. That has been done in a couple of uh, occasions. I did it once uh, when I was in office when Israel made an unwarranted invasion of, uh, of Lebanon, in my opinion. And I notified the prime minister of Israel at the time that this violated U.S. law in that our sale of weapons to Israel was, was predicated on Israel using the weapons for defensive purposes only. That's the present U.S. law and was then. And so they, they withdrew from Lebanon under, under that pressure. Uh, when George H.W. Bush was in office, uh, he witnessed the es escalation of uh, Israeli settlement building in a major settlement area between uh, Jerusalem and uh, Bethlehem. It's only a distance of about six miles, by the way. And he actually withheld several hundred millions of uh, U.S. aid money to Israel. And then Prime Minister Shamir backed down and stopped construction on that particular settlement area under pressure from the United States and the withholding of, of actual funds. I think $400 million was finally uh, withheld. And so, but as soon as uh, as soon as George H. W. Bush went out of office, uh, the settlement was recommenced, and it's now been basically completed. So, on two occasions, that was done in the past. But I don't see that that's a fruitful way to threaten Israel with withholding of funds. We give Israel about ten million dollars in aid each day, and uh, that's a lot of money. Uh, but uh, you know, I think we feel obligated to do it, and I wish that we would. Uh, give an equivalent amount of aid to the suffering Palestinians. Has President Obama sought out your advice on the Middle East, President Carter? You've met with him several times. Not directly. Um, when he, he, he heard that I was going to, I notified him that I was going to the Middle East in December, that I would be meeting with um, the, the Lebanese who are going to have an election on the 7th of June, which the Carter Center will probably monitor. I also told him I was going to Syria a nation with which we do not have diplomatic relations, and I was going to meet with Hamas leaders and others. <clears throat> he asked me to to make a report to him after I came back, which I did. So the night before the five presidents met in a highly publicized meeting in the Oval Office and the White House, uh, I met with uh, President Obama, President-elect Obama then, quite extensively. My wife was uh, in the room taking notes. And David Axelrod was the only other person in the room taking notes. He never did comment. So just the four of us. And I told him about all the work of the Carter Center, and uh, and most of his questions that took up more than half the time was about the Middle East. It was at that time that I gave him the only copy of my new book that I had, uh, which I had just read over to make sure it didn't have any mistakes in it. Uh, Helen Thomas, who questioned you when you were president now, is questioning the 10th president uh, that she has covered as uh, dean of the White House Press Corps, President Obama. Asked President Obama, do you know of any country in the Middle East that has nuclear weapons? Uh, he evaded that question. <laughs> interesting. Uh, Helen Thomas is one of the best reporters that ever served in the White House. Uh, she used to give me some tough questions, which I never avoided, by the way, but I, I noticed that uh, later in uh, George W. Bush's uh, term, he did pretty well uh, excluded Helen Thomas from the, uh, from the approved interrogators of him, but I think she asked some very, uh, uh, very appropriate questions. Well well, she was clearly alluding to Israel. Do you think the Middle East should be a nuclear-free zone? I would like to see it nuclear-free. There's no doubt that Israel does have a large uh, nuclear arsenal. Uh, this has been known ever since before I became uh, president, and, and even Israeli leaders have, have uh, said publicly that this is true. President Carter, thank you very much for joining us. I've enjoyed talking to you. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Former President Jimmy Carter, his latest book is called We Can Have Peace in the Holy Land. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting on over 750 stations on Pacifica and NPR stations, low-power FM, 